All right, so this brings us to part one of simple harmonic motion. Now, um, simple harmonic motion is, um, is a specific type of motion which um, falls under the category of periodic motion. And periodic motion is um, basically anything that happens um, in kind of a recurring way. So some examples of periodic motion um, would be, imagine if we had a spring and we hang from that spring a mass, and then we just kind of let it go. You can see that it's going to oscillate back and forth. And if you uh, have a stopwatch handy, you could check that and see that actually the period of motion as it oscillates back and forth um, stays constant, which is to say that each cycle takes the same amount of time. So a mass on a spring falls under that category of simple harmonic motion. Another one would be like a pendulum. So imagine a mass hanging from a string, and if we let this swing back and forth, as it swings back and forth, um, each period, each swing back and forth takes the same amount of time um, as it goes. So Simple harmonic motion, as I said, is a specific kind of periodic motion. And basically, it happens when restoring forces work to bring an, uh, a distorted object back to equilibrium. So you can imagine, for example, in the case of our pendulum, equilibrium is the situation where the pendulum is um, just sitting at that zero point. And if we distort it from equilibrium, it's trying to get back there all the time. And as it swings back and forth, that's what it's trying to do. Um, the greatest displacement from equilibrium we call the amplitude. So this is not unlike with waves. Um, at the amplitude or at the extremes, the acceleration is actually the greatest, which means when it's the most, when it's the furthest from its equilibrium point, that's when it's accelerating the quickest to get back to its equilibrium point. Once it reaches uh, the middle or the equilibrium point, the velocity is at a maximum, but the acceleration has dropped to zero. So this happens because essentially it's always accelerating back towards its equilibrium position. Now simple harmonic motion specifically occurs when the motion's acceleration is directed towards the equilibrium position. And the acceleration is directly related with its distortion from equilibrium. So to fall under that category of simple harmonic motion it has to meet these two criteria. Okay, so let's take a look at this situation here where we've got a, a spring on a frictionless floor and we're going to distort it from equilibrium and it's, essentially it's going, to, it's going to move back and forth in simple harmonic motion. So an, an example of that would be this. We've got our mass attached to a spring. I'm just going to grab it and I'm going to distort it to the right here. When I let it go, that spring is going to pull it back to the left and it's going to start to oscillate back and forth. What I want you to notice about this, what makes it simple harmonic motion is this mass keeps on trying to reach its equilibrium position. But every time what it does is it kind of builds up so much speed that it overshoots its equilibrium position. So when it's moving to the left, it shoots past, but slows down, then ends up moving back to the right and so on. And so it keeps on overshooting the equilibrium position. And so it's going to oscillate back and forth like this for some time. So in this picture here, uh, just a couple things to, to kind of set straight. Let's think about this green line here as our equilibrium position. So there's our equilibrium. That's where the mass is trying to go back to all the time. And so imagine what happens is we pull this mass to the side and I'm going to distort it by a certain um, position which I'm going to call A, the amplitude, and I'm going to release it. So the position at that point right there is equal to A, which really is a maximum. But what's going to happen here when we release it? Well, when we release it, it's going to experience an acceleration back in the opposite direction. And because we've released it from rest, it's not yet moving. So the velocity will be zero, but the acceleration, it'll be a maximum, but because it's back in the negative direction, it'll be like a negative maximum. Okay, so what happens? Well, it accelerates to the left, it picks up a bunch of speed, it gets back to this equilibrium point, and now at this point it's moving this way with a whole bunch of speed. And if you think about it, as soon as it goes past the equilibrium point, then the spring is going to try and push it back to equilibrium. So this is really the fastest it's going to be traveling. The position at this point would be zero. We're at our equilibrium point. The velocity would be a maximum, but I'm going to call it a negative maximum because it's to the left. And our acceleration, because we're at our equilibrium point, our acceleration will have dropped to zero. This is where it wants to be. It's not going to be, um, it's not going to, there's going to be no force on it in that one instant. But of course, because it has that velocity, it overshoots and it keeps on going. And so we can see here that it's going to reach this position here, which I could call negative A. It's going to, the same amplitude as before, but just in the negative direction. Um, 
as soon as it goes past the equilibrium point, the entire time, the acceleration is going to be directed back towards equilibrium. And when it's at that negative amplitude, that maximum displacement to the left, it's going to be stopped. So the velocity will be zero. So again, our position, I'm going to call negative A, which is like a negative maximum, if you want to think of it like that. Uh, the velocity in that instant will be zero, and the acceleration will be a maximum, but in this case, directed to the right, and so a positive. And so this pattern is going to sort of repeat. It's going to accelerate back towards the equilibrium position. It's going to gain a whole bunch of speed. It's going to go flying along here past this point. In this one instant, it's back at um, equilibrium, which means our position is zero. But it's going really fast, and it's going to the right. So our velocity is going to be a maximum, and it would be a positive maximum. Our acceleration, when we're at that equilibrium position, that's where it wants to be. It's no longer going to be accelerating. Its acceleration will be zero. And so it overshoots and we get right back to where we started. It returns to this position here, which would be equal to our amplitude. The um, velocity at that maximum amplitude will have dropped to zero, and the acceleration will be back and to the left. And so our uh, position would be equal to our amplitude, which is a, a maximum. Our velocity will have dropped to zero, and our acceleration will be back to being that negative maximum value. And so um, it's sort of helpful to think about these things and plot these all um, on a graph to sort of visualize how they're all related to each other. You can sort of see the pattern already probably, but let's see what it looks like when we plot all three of them just on the same graph. And don't worry about um, the scale here. We're just going to kind of get a sense of, of, um, of, uh, of what it looks like. So I'm going to plot um, the, the position, the velocity, and the acceleration all on this graph, and I'm going to graph it versus time. So think about the position. Initially, we started with a maximum amplitude, then it dropped to zero, then it dropped to a negative maximum, then back to zero, then back to a positive maximum. So my um, position is going to start here at some maximum value. It's going to drop to zero, then it's going to keep on moving to a negative maximum value, then back to zero, and then to a positive maximum value. And what we actually see here is the, pa the, the, um, the, the shape that this is going to take is going to be a curved um, sort of wave-like shape. Now, for those of you, uh, depending on what math you're working on right now, you might recognize this as being a sinusoidal curve. In fact, this one looks like a cosine curve. Um, and that is, in fact, the case. Um, for the velocity, uh, you can see that we're going to start at zero, but then go to a negative maximum, back to zero, to a maximum and then back to zero. And so um, I'm gonna start at zero here. At this halfway point, I'm gonna reach some, or this quarter way point, I'm gonna reach some negative maximum value. Then I'm gonna be at zero, and then I'm gonna be at some positive maximum value, and then I'm gonna return back to zero. And so the shape of our curve looks like this. Okay, complicated enough already? Let's keep going. Um, the acceleration starts as a negative maximum, goes to zero, then goes to a maximum, then goes to zero, back to a negative maximum. So our acceleration is going to start here. And then it's going to reach zero at this point. Then it's going to reach a maximum positive value at this point, then back to zero, then a negative maximum value. And so we're going to get a curve that looks like this. Now, I know this can be a little bit uh, confusing to look at, but the main point we want to recognize is a couple of things I just want to point out. That the, ex the um, position, the velocity, and the acceleration all follow these wave-like patterns. Um, and that they're, these waves are essentially just out of phase with each other. The wave forms look the same, but it's just like they've been shifted to the left or to the right. In particular, if you just look at this blue line for position and the red line for acceleration, you notice that they are perfectly out of phase, which is to say they're both zero at the same time, but one of them is a negative maximum, the other one is a positive, and vice versa. And so they're always um, going to reach maxima and, and minima at the same time, just going to be opposite of each other. Okay, that's it for part one of Simple Harmonic Motion.